And I'll hand you over to the wonderful great hands of Megan Kusida. We, we love the Kusidas. As she now shares how prayer has been an integral part of her life and her family, especially here at St. Pius. Thank you, Megan, for your powerful witness of faith. Thank you, Father, and hi, everyone. My name is Megan Kurzeder, and I'm a parishioner here at St. Pius, along with my husband, Brian, and our four children. Earlier this week, a friend asked me to pray for an intention that was important to her, and I told her that I would. Simple enough, right? Um, but conversations like that one used to make me feel a little uncomfortable, um, not because I didn't see the value, but because I didn't trust myself necessarily to follow through. Um, and saying you'll pray for someone and praying for someone are two very different things. Um, I was always searching for the right way to pray, and that meant that to pray for someone, I first had to figure out when and how to do it. And that was just enough friction to ensure that I usually forgot. Discipline and consistency don't come naturally to me. I get bored without variety, and I'm more likely to ruminate on how I could do this thing a little bit better than to actually start it. Um, for all of us who are wired this way, we know how prayer can very easily become an ambition and not an action, definitely not a habit. I have to reject this delusion that I can design by myself my own optimal way of praying. Um, Many times, and this is especially since I became a mom in the disability community, um, I have been reminded that in a world that prizes independence, we were created for something that's actually better. We're supposed to need each other. So it's no surprise that prayer comes more easily when I'm leaning on my family and leaning on the church. My husband and I are wired pretty differently from each other. Um, I am forever in awe of his natural discipline. He just does what he says he's going to do, and he seems to think it's nothing, but it is one of the most significant ways that he helps me orient my life toward God. Case in point, a few years ago, he suggested that for Lent, we should pray a rosary together every night um, and take turns setting an intention for each decade. It's actually something we continued to do after Lent ended and have continued to do ever since. He is so good at routines. And as his wife, I get to lean into his strength. And that rosary is the reason that I didn't feel awkward promising to pray for my friend this week. I knew exactly when we would. And our kids benefit too. Um, I remember one example from when our oldest two were toddlers. Many of you, I know, can feel viscerally what Mass is like with kids that age. Um, unpredictable, conspicuously loud. Um, you feel kind of like a human jungle gym. And at this time, um, Brian suggested we should spend Mass in the, in the calming room. And oh, I resisted that one on principle. Our kids are baptized, I said. They, are, they belong in this community. They're valuable members. And in my mind, calming rooms were for distancing people. But Brian saw that we needed consistency and we needed predictability, and that's where we could get it. In that space, there was less pressure to keep things quiet, and so we could better help our kids grow into this Sunday routine um, the way that they needed to. He was right, more right than I could have pictured at the time. Um, Mass just got a little more challenging for us before it got any easier. We would eventually learn that three of our four children have a genetic disorder, so we would have to find comfort and familiarity as parents of children with complex multiple disabilities. And just like every parent, we are charged with helping our children to know, love, and serve God, but three of our kids have language disabilities, and that means that words are not a reliable teaching tool. We have had to trust other ways of communicating who God is, what faith is, why we hope, how we pray. Um, one of the best tools we have is repetition. Faithful, regular participation. And we know that in that, 
God makes himself known to our children in ways that we can't understand and frankly don't even need to. We spent eight or nine years of masses in calming rooms. And then this past Lent, there came a day when we walked into church and none of the rooms had space for us. With the help of a wonderful hospitality minister who has been supporting our family for years, um, we tentatively tried the back row of the West Transept and no catastrophes happened. So the next week we took a deep breath and we moved up front to the accessible row. And that's where we sit now. And I love watching my kids take in more of mass from here. Catholic liturgy is so beautifully sensory. Um, and now they can see the artwork. They can watch the procession. They can see where the music's coming from, smell the incense. My daughters can walk hand in hand up to put our envelope in the basket. Uh, and there are still moments, maybe right now, when they are unpredictable and loud and restless. But I am deeply grateful for a parish where our family is accepted without question. I'm also deeply grateful for a church that tells me that we do need to be here, and when, and how often. Because like Jesus told his followers, man wasn't made for the Sabbath, the Sabbath was made for man. Even when it doesn't feel like it, the routine of being here is good for us. I'm grateful for a liturgy that takes beauty and wisdom and wraps them in the consistency of a predictable ritual. To me, one of the most evocative parts of Mass is one of those ritual elements. In the offertory, we bring God the gifts that he first gave us and ask him to transform them. In that moment, whatever might be going on in my pew at the time, uh, I try to thank God for giving me this vocation, my children, my time, my faith itself. I know that I'm returning these gifts in pretty rough condition, but there's something consoling about doing this together as a church community. We pile all of our gifts up on that altar and we pray together that God will do what only he can do and turn the humble into something holy. Thank you. <laughs>